What is going on everybody? Tyson here with you. We're out in Santa Cruz, California. We've been cruising around, enjoying the sunshine. I'm hanging out here with Evout and Tina from Gazelle. We've been checking out the Gazelle Ultimate T10 HMB. T10 there meaning it's a 10 speed. HMB stands for Hybrid Mid-Drive Bosch. If you don't know anything about Gazelle, they're from the Netherlands and they've been in business a long time, since 1892. They actually are the recipient of, I believe it's called the Royal Dutch Award. And essentially to get this award, they only give it out to you know, one company or group within each industry. And you have to be making a, a big impact with shaping the direction of it. And that's something that Gazelle has been really pivotal for. I'm gonna let, uh, I'll let Devout tell you a little bit about this. So you were talking to me earlier about how you guys have really helped to kind of shape the industry. And in the Netherlands, cycling is a lot more than just a hobby or a pastime. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, our main way of transportation. I think, uh, I don't know the details exactly, but I think people own three to four bikes uh, a, a person in the Netherlands. So uh, that's a lot of bikes. And, um, you know, when I used to live in Amsterdam, um, I would first think, how do I get there by bike instead of like my default of going by car? And um, that means uh, if you want to have more people on bikes, that means uh, that you have to make bikes really comfortable, I would say. And the infrastructure, of course, needs to be really good. And I think Gazelle, over the last 127 years, have been working really hard in making the bikes as comfortable as possible so that it could constantly like uh, contribute to your main mode of transportation. And that is also our mission here in the US, is uh, to uh, bring bikes to the US that uh, yeah, make it easy on you to use. And uh, hence the uh, low step frames, uh, the more like upright seating position. Uh, because one of the other things that is uh, really contributing to like a upright seating position is the safety aspect. If you're much more upright, you can see much more what's happening around you. Whereas if you're sitting much more forward looking, you don't see all that much what happens behind you. And uh, yeah, that's where we, I think, uh, are very different from, let's say, more US based brands is that, uh, you know, we know what cycling is about uh, since we've been doing that for 127 years. Yeah, it's a huge legacy. And Comfort is a big part of it, but also safety and reliability is a big thing. They do a lot of rigorous testing on their bikes for riding in humid and salty, you know, coastal type regions. Great for us here in Santa Cruz, of course. And yeah, it looks very similar yeah. to Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah. And it, uh, it really is, you can see that with how they back up their bikes. So for all the Gazelle bikes, you're looking at a two-year comprehensive and 10-year warranty on the frame. So that is a solid warranty. That's one of the best ones out there. And for the one we're looking at here, the Ultimate T10 HMB, this is priced at $37.99, which is a little bit more than some of the competition out there, but you're also getting a lot more than some of the competition out there. This is what I would call a purpose-designed, feature-rich electric bike. Purpose-designed meaning you've got a lot of components like the tires here, these Energizer Plus from Schwalbe that are specifically for e-bikes. And the chain is also thicker and stronger to put up with the increased stress that it gets on it from that mid-mount motor. Things like that are purpose designed. It's built as an e-bike as opposed to someone taking a regular bike, slapping on some other components. You can see it in the frame as well, which we'll talk about in a bit. And the feature rich part, we'll talk about all these in detail a bit here, but I mean, check it out. You've got the integrated aluminum alloy fenders, front and rear. Those are nice sturdy fenders and they do a great job of coverage as well. We see some bikes where they have, you know, a half of that covered, so they don't do quite as good of a job. They've got the plastic flaps on the end for some extra protection there. And you know, you got the rear rack back here. You've got integrated headlights, front and rear. They're battery integrated. The one up front, that's the Axa blue line. That's a really bright light, has the side cutouts for some extra safety, side visibility, you know, reflective striping on the sidewalls, adjustable length kickstand back here that is also rear mounted. So you don't get pedal lock if you're moving the bike backwards, you know, in the garage or at the bike rack or something like that. So really went the whole nine yards with all the different components on here. So, all right, let's go ahead and dive in and look at some of these in detail. Now they've got two colors. There's also the champion red. Both of them have this nice glossy finish to it. I really like the white because that gives you even more visibility at night and stands out great during the day as well. Now you've got a few different frame sizes on here. We're looking at a large one. This is the 57 centimeter. And so you could also go down to a medium or a small if you'd like to. 
very approachable here. We've got the step through, as you can see, it's a great standover height of just 18 inches. And so you can adjust it a lot. Of course you can adjust the seat and then you've got a lot of range of adjustability here in the stem. If you check this out, huge, uh, huge degree range that you can tweak that to fit your riding style and you, what size of a person you are. Really my only gripe with it is that it's a tool adjustable one. This isn't a big deal, but you have to bust out your Allen wrenches to be able to adjust this and also the seat on there as well. And, and maybe you can tell me about uh, why did you guys decide not to do the quick release for the seat? Is that just like an anti-theft thing? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, once you set it up once, uh, you're good to go, I would say. And uh, if you have a quick uh, adjust and yeah, then you can get it stolen as well, right? Yeah, and especially when you've got a, a better than average seat on here. This is the Sail Royale, so they're a little bit softer, a little bit bigger. That gives you some more comfort so you can ride longer. And you could, of course, if you want, upgrade that to a suspension seat post to get a little bit more cushioning. And if you did that, you would really be appreciating that you didn't have quick release here, because that is a bit of a high dollar item. People might want to try and steal that. And speaking of security, the bike is security conscious in general, which is awesome. Check this out. We've got the Axa Defender. This is a cafe lock here. So this is handy if you're you know, you stopped at the start and you just need to run inside and grab one thing and you're going to be right back out. You can use this and actually, um, about, can I get you over here to do this since I have uh, one hand busy? Yeah, exactly. So you have to turn around, pick up the key and then you uh, pull the... Come over here on this side. Yeah. So you turn around the key and then you uh, turn this lever down. You uh, put the key in the old position again and pull that out. And we'll let you get a look right back here. As you can see, it puts this bar right through the spokes there yeah and the great thing there's uh accessories that be sold uh, that you could put like a, an extra chain key in there so uh, then you basically lock your rear wheel but you can also have like a chain going around like a you know a, 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 like a lamp post or something yeah so that's that is an awesome security feature there just a little bit extra and then if you want to leave that locked so i can have the key out of that yeah absolutely so this is another great thing about these is that they're key to like. So same key for the axle lock and the battery. Now, really my only gripe about this is you, you have to lock it to take the key out. And if you want it to be unlocked, the key has got to be in there. And that can be a little bit frustrating if you like to keep it on a keychain because you have to you know, put it back on the keychain, take it off the keychain. Easy way, low tech solution, just get a little uh, carabiner to put this on that you can clip it onto your keychain easy so that you don't lose it. And so we can use this right here to take the battery out. And I'll turn that once here. And so it's got a two-step removal process. Might be a little challenging with one hand. We'll see if I can do it here. So after you unlock it with the key, then there is a tab right here to depress, and that will let you remove the battery. I think I'll need, uh, yeah. if you would turn the key there so it'll release all the way. There we go. So it's two-step removal process, keeps the battery in there secure, which is awesome. This is the Bosch PowerTube 500. So it's approximately 500 watt hours. It's really about 482, 36 volt, 13.4 amp hour. And this is the newer generation for Bosch. So they used to have the power pack and those ones, instead of being mounted in the frame, they would sit on top of the frame, on top of the down tube. And they're a little bit more interchangeable, really easy to swap between all kinds of different bikes. The power tube is technically interchangeable, but there's a lot of customization to it. So manufacturers can design their own top covers for it. And then you also have, you know, there's some vertical mount ones and some side mount ones. So not as interchangeable, but I think they integrate a lot more smoothly. And I've always thought that interchanging your batteries was a little bit more of an edge case. So I appreciate how cleanly it integrates into the down tube. Da -da. It's challenging with one hand. <laughs> All right, and so check that out. It just it fits in there nice and snug, gives it a nice sleek look, and it, it's not to say that it is a stealthy bike you know we're not trying to make it look like not an e-bike at all it is most definitely an e-bike it just integrates nicely and smoothly i love the visual footprint and while we're down here we can talk a little bit about the bosch performance line motor so this is generation 3 bosch performance line 3.0 you know, with every generation of them, they increase the power a little bit, reduce the weight and everything. We're looking at about 8.8 .8 pounds on this one. Uh, I think they're 300% power output, right? Yeah. And up to 120 RPMs for your maximum pedal cadence, which is awesome. And this motor in particular, this is a really quiet motor. Some of that is just improvements Bosch has made, but something we've got going on here that I think is awesome 
is, and it's gonna be a little hard to see because we've got this awesome chain cover here, but we're working with a, is it a 36 tooth chain ring? Does that sound right? Yeah. And uh, that's also because uh, they basically went uh, from like a gearing down ratio within the motor. Mm -hmm. They went uh, on a one-on-one -on -one gear ratio basically. So the chain wheel on the front cog will be a little bit bigger, uh, but that means that there's less, um, you know, um, uh, parts within the motor, which makes the motor lighter and uh, less noisy. Yes, and another great thing that this does, uh, having the full-size chain ring up here, the, what he was talking about on the inside, Court and I will usually call that reduction gearing, where you pedal one revolution of the crank arms and then the chain ring, the smaller chain ring would go around you know, two and a half times or something like that. And those reduction gears actually add a bit of drag as well. So if you were pedaling without electric assistance or if you pushed beyond 20 miles per hour, then that would push up into, you, you're just pedaling by yourself then, so you'd get just a little bit of a drag on it. And so that could be just a little bit frustrating. They say that it would help out with tension on the chain and things like that, but I prefer this setup where we have bigger chain ring, one-to-one -one ratio, no drag at all. We've got a thicker and more sturdy chain ring on here that helps out as well, you know, e-bike rated. And the shifting system here, since we're over here, let's take a look. We're looking at a Shimano Dior XT. This is top of the line stuff. We see it a lot on mountain bikes actually. So the cassette back here, 11 to 36 teeth on that cassette there, 10 speed, so a one by 10. Awesome performance from the Dior XT. It does, and that range is big enough that you can climb some really steep hills. And we do that on the ride test. We climbed an insanely steep hill and I was able to make it up with just one hand on the handlebars as well. So fantastic there. And about, we were talking a little bit about this before, but this is really like a, a trekking bike, kind of multi-purpose. You could use it for some commuting, but you could also go like, you know, on some, you know, not quite mountain biking, but get out a little bit more and do some trails and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it brings you out to different places. And I would say um, we have a Gazelle Elite, a Royal Elite, which is like our most comfortable bike. Uh, we have our more sportier bikes, uh, which are the Citizen, and we have some other uh, uh, sportier bikes coming uh, in 2020. And this bike actually really fits in between. So we always say you have your comfort category, where you have, let's say, your uh, Easy Flow and your uh, Arroyo Elite. And this is uh, the active category, so it really takes you to different places. It's not as rigid as a sportive bike, but it's also not as comfortable as the Arroyo Elite. Yeah, it really hits a nice middle ground. I've been riding it around quite a bit already, and I love the riding position. It, you could adjust the handlebars a bit. As you can see here, I've got them a little bit more forward, and I, I like the forward riding style better, but it'd be pretty easy to adjust those up higher, have a little bit more upright. You're still not quite in the like upright, relaxed cruiser style, but you can tweak that a little bit depending on how much comfort you want in the ride. And you can take this all kinds of places. So we've got the suspension up here, that's the, the mono shock here. You get about 30 millimeters of travel on that. That really helps helps to cushion on those bumps. And then, like I mentioned, you could add a suspension seat post on the back if you want to. The tread on these tires are great for multi-purpose as well. If you check this out, we have the bigger tread pattern in the middle. So this helps to reduce some of that drag and friction if you're, say, just riding on paved roads and you want more speed and efficiency. And then we've got a little bit more aggressive tread on the sides. Helps out if you're riding on some dirt or something like that, need a little extra traction, especially when turning. That will, especially like if you're turning and riding in rain or something like that, that helps keep you safe. We mentioned these tires already. These are awesome Schwalbe tires, the Energizer Plus. So in addition to that reflective striping along here, they have their highest level of puncture protection as well. I forget, uh, there it is right there, G-Guard 5 puncture protection. But you can take that pretty much anywhere and not have to worry about getting a flat. Awesome if you, you know, I'm in Colorado, we have tons of goat heads everywhere. And so you pretty much have to have puncture protection if you're gonna be out riding. So love to see that here. Uh, backing up a little bit so we can talk about some more components on the bike. We talked about the Dior group set for shifting. The brakes here are Shimano as well. These are the MT420s. This is another component that you see a lot on mountain biking setups. So you get solid performance out of here. Two finger levers that are easy to actuate thanks to it being hydraulic disc brakes. And they are fully adjustable for you know the reach and angle and everything. You need a tool to do that, of course, but you can tweak those to fit your hand size and preferred position. And the rotors here, we're looking at 180 millimeters on the front and then 160 on the back. Dual piston calipers, solid stopping power from these. You know, like I said, this is something that we even see on mountain bikes that are gonna be stopping on some really steep slopes. So these will be able to handle 
anything that you throw at them. And we mentioned the rear rack. It's a little bit higher weight capacity than standard. You know, standard on rear racks is 27, or excuse me, 25 kilograms. This one's actually up at 27. You get the bungee clamp on the top right here so that you can strap stuff down. And of course, you know, pannier hangers and you've got some latch points for bungees and everything else there. So a lot of options for tying stuff down. As you can see right here, it's integrated onto that aluminum fender. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but there is a support running right underneath here that connects it to the frame. So if you're like me and saw that and were a little worried about the stability of it, they've got it connected to the frame well. That's gonna keep it from uh, you know bending or jostling around if you've got something rather heavy on the back there. And the kickstand here as well, these are fantastic kickstands. They're Ursus, Ursus Moy, is that right? Yeah. And they're adjustable for the length on these without needing a tool. There's a little kind of a button on the underside here. There it is. So you can press that and just adjust it on the fly. Great if you need to park it on a slope or something like that. All right, guys, so we're going to spend some time going over the cockpit here so you can get familiar with it. The grips on here, we've got ergonomic locking grips. They're rubberized, got the nice two-tone colors going on. Nice and comfy grips. They feel soft. I appreciate that they're locking with ergonomic grips. It's really easy to, you know, if you're, especially if you're going up a hill or something, to be leaning into those a bit and to turn those all askew. Appreciate the locking on here. We've got a flick bell on the right, and then the Shimano trigger shifters right here for that Dior XT. Uh, they've got a gearing readout window, which you can see along the top right here. Does not have any numbers on it, but it still serves to give you a rough idea of where you're at. And then I'm moving over here to the control pad. This is the Bosch Purion display. And so it's not as fancy as their, I like their Intuvia display. That one's a little bit bigger, got more details, got the USB charging port. This one does have a USB port right here, but that's really only for diagnostics and firmware updates and that kind of stuff. So no charging your devices on here. And so we'll fire this up. The power button's right along the top here. And actually you can also, if you want, you can fire up the bike by pressing the power button right down here on the battery. There we go. Nice thing that you can do on these Bosch systems. So as you can see, we've got the speed readout right there, and then it fires up and off. That means no assist at all. If you want to change up your level of assist, you have the up and down right here. You can go up through Eco, Tour, Sport, and Turbo. Highest level of assist. We've got the battery readout right here. One, two, three, four, five bars on that. So that gets the job done. Yeah, we say this a lot. We prefer a percentage just because it's a little bit more precise, but five bars is still pretty good. It'll give you a rough idea of where you're at. And this is a pretty long range bike too. You're looking at, if you're riding with some pretty high levels of assist, maybe up some steep hills, maybe a 30 mile range. And then on the higher end, if you're more flat ground riding an Eco, you could get a lot further, maybe 60 to 70 miles. So this bike is pretty easily going to outrange how long you wanna be sitting in the saddle. So I think that is awesome. We've got some other features on here we can talk about. You can hold down the up or the plus there to turn the lights off and on. And I think I just turned them oh, up there. So it turns on your headlight there and your tail light as well. And I'm not sure how well it'll show up on the camera, but I can even see these in the broad daylight. Nice bright lights. That is fantastic. We can hold that down again to turn off those headlights. You can see the indicator goes away right there. And we'll see if I can remember. I think we can hold down minus here to cycle. Yep, there we go. We can get the trip distance and the total distance or the odometer. And then range. So that is, I guess that's estimating the effective range for how long you can ride at the current assist level. That is pretty cool. So if we were to, let's get back out here to the main screen. So we're in turbo. Let's go ahead and change that down to eco. And then we'll hold minus a couple times here to get over to that range setting. And check it out, up to 28 miles from 14. So that is awesome. And to me, that more than makes up for not having a precise battery readout. If you can just click over there and check your range, that'll, that's much easier than having to look at a battery percentage and say, well, I think I can make it this many miles. This just gives it to you straight. So I really appreciate that. And I mentioned that this Purion display is not quite as full featured as the Intuvia. The nice thing with Bosch systems is you can 
you can upgrade that. There's a lot of bike dealers that will give you an upgrade to Intuvia if you want. You can get it for like 200 bucks, including the labor. So if that's something you're really attached to, you can do that. But I think that this more than gets the job done. Uh, we've got one more button on here we didn't mention, which is the walk mode, of course, which you can hold down to move the bike forward at a slow pace. Awesome if you, you know, walk in with a friend or something like that. Okay, guys, so we got a few more things to talk about that make this bike special. And looking at the frame here, this is a, and I mentioned this already, it's a really sturdy frame for a mid-step. Really no noticeable frame flex. I was impressed with it, I was cruising around on it. And part of what helps to make it so stable, we've got this, uh, what would you call it? It's like a, the hydroformed. Uh, so we've got the entire like headset area right up here is, is one piece. And then down here on the bottom bracket as well, similar thing. And you can actually see some weld points here. They're really subtle, but we've in this middle section right here, it's essentially like a double walled down tube. Helps to give it some extra support. And you can tell they've really put a lot of work into strengthening this. It, you know, some of it is for style. It looks really nice. We got the branding up here, but that extra size to it, the single uh, single formed pieces on the top and bottom, and then having those double walls really gives it some extra sturdiness. And of course, we got to mention, we've got bottle cage bosses on here. Love to see it on a mid-step. And as you know, for us at EBR, that's a big, we really love to see those, not just for bottle cages, but there's all kinds of things that you can attach there, third-party stuff. So I appreciate that they included those as well. You know, of course, we've got all the attachment points for the rack and the fenders and everything else, just in case you wanted to get creative there. And let's check out this fork before we move on. So take a look at just the low profile on this. It is really thin. You know, you look at it from the side, it looks a bit more standard. But they did an awesome job cutting it out right here. That makes it a little bit more aerodynamic and just a really nice visual footprint. You know, it may not make a huge difference when you're riding in terms of the aerodynamic nature, but every little bit helps. I really appreciate that extra touch. And then uh, we haven't looked at the charging port here. That is right over here on the right side of the bike. So you can plug in there. It's a great location for it because that keeps it away from the crank arms down here so that you don't have to worry about, you know, accidentally hitting that while you're moving the bike around in your garage or something like that. Don't have to worry about damaging the cord nearly as much. So I really appreciate that. And we're going to pop the battery out here because we didn't mention this when we were looking at it earlier, but you can charge off the bike as well too. We've got that exact same charge port right here. That way if you, you know, you're storing the bike in your garage, maybe it's in winter so it's cold or summer so it's really hot, you don't want your battery sitting in those temperature fluctuations. Kind of a room temperature is what you wanna keep those at so you can bring it inside, charge it with you. That is awesome. And speaking of charging, we've got the charger here so you guys can take a look at it. Uh, standard Bosch four amp charger. So this is going to be quite a bit faster than the standard for a lot of e-bikes, which is two amps. A lot faster charging, and it still only weighs 1.6 pounds. So we're getting essentially double the standard charging speed for you know maybe 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 pounds more than most standard chargers. So that is awesome. Small enough that you can toss it in a bag and carry it with you like we've been doing today. Okay, guys, we're redoing the range or the the climb test here. Actually, down in first gear this time instead of in second. Oh, here is the hill. Not sure what the grade is, but steeper than anything that I've seen before. And I've done this once before. I was actually in second gear. I didn't realize it last time. Made it a little harder for myself than I needed to. So I'm down in first this time. But I'm definitely, you know, putting some work in, but really cruising right up this hill. And this is steep enough here that this would be, this would be pretty intense even to walk up, honestly, much less bike. I think it says a lot that I'm able to make it up here, you know, using just one hand. And I'm still sitting down, I'm not standing up, which is awesome. Normally you'd have to really stand up and get pumping on there. Oh, we're almost there. All right, yeah, not too shabby. Made it up to the top pretty easy. Well, wheel back around so you can get a look at it. But yeah, fantastic climbing power from that motor. All right guys, so the hill climb test is over for now. We're just cruising around some peaceful neighborhoods here in Santa Cruz. I am riding the ultimate still, of course, and we've got about here, which bike are you riding? I'm driving the uh, Medeo. Oh yeah. T9 with the Nexus Flying Plus, 400 watt hour battery. Very, uh, like it's the end of our entry point price bike, and uh, yeah, it's just a really smooth bike.
And really, all of these, so smooth, so quiet. Which one are you on, Tina? That was, is that the I'm city's the in? Oh, that's the Arroyo. That's right. Yep. Oh, yeah. Best selling bike and our best selling color, which we call petrol. Ah, that's right. <laughs> the the petrol couch, I heard you calling it <laughs> for the nice, comfy it's ride. Very, it's very comfortable. That's a, it's like a quality name. I like that a lot. I'm going to shift this down to Eco so you guys can check out just how quiet it is. You know, we have the Bosch performance line on here. This is not the speed, just the standard Bosch performance line. Really quiet, does an awesome job. We have a, a full chain ring down here. I think it's 36 teeth as opposed to having a small one with reduction gearing. So that cuts down on the drag and the volume as well. So we'll take off here just so you can hear an eco. Switch the camera over here. All right, I'm ready to follow you guys. All right, so that was an Eco. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that up to Turbo, the highest level. And we'll do that again off the start, just so you can hear the difference in volume. I mean, of course, we're gonna be getting a lot more power on this one. And also quieter. I feel like every time it's like, listen to the motor, and then the truck started up. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the motor. <laughs> okay, we're away from some of the louder traffic so that you can hear the motor while we're riding in turbo. So as you can hear, or rather not hear as may be the case, really quiet even when we're in turbo. Very responsive. I mean, that's a great thing about the Bosch performance line. We're measuring cadence and torque and wheel speed. So it kicks in virtually right away. And then the same thing for stopping, pretty much instant. And you can see, easy to see display. That's a nice thing with the Bosch Purion here. It's the grayscale monochrome. So even in direct sunlight, really easy to see. Not as simple as some of the others from Bosch, uh, like the Intuvia, but really gets the job done a little bit more of a sleek minimalist look to it the balance on this bike excellent very low frame flex it is a step through but they've done such a good job to strengthen and really make a rigid frame here so right and no handed no problem on it Whee! sorry <laughs> we left tina behind there so now, these Bosch motors have software-driven shift detection, but your mileage may vary with that. It's not perfect, so keep that in mind. You wanna ease off on those pedals when you're shifting here. We always say about 30 to like 60, 70 miles. Okay, yeah. Um, and that would be, of course, um, on flat terrain. Mm-hmm. Flat so, terrain and yeah. eco. Yeah, and eco. But I would say safely, would say 30 miles with some hills, uh, turbo. Uh, yeah, you definitely be fine. Aggressive use of the assist system, yeah. which is an awesome range, guys, and something you got to remember when we're talking about range on these. You know, this bike may be able to do 30 miles with a lot of assist, but how long can you do? You know, it's you can think about the, the battery range and then you know, what's your effective butt range, as they call it on the forum. Because if you don't want to be sitting in the saddle for 30 miles, then you don't even need to worry about that. But if you need to, 30 miles to maybe even up to 60, 70 if you're good terrain and cruising along in eco mode instead of turbo. You know, that's probably the most asked question at electric bike shops is what's the range on it and there's no right answer like it's there's a ton of factors there's how big of a person you are there's the specifics of the bike there's what kind of terrain you're riding on how much you're pedaling it's really sky's the limit
cruising. And I mentioned this before, but I love just how stable this bike is. Riding no-handed, very easy, and you saw on that stretch right back there, I mean, I was flying down that. I actually got up over 30 miles an hour coasting. I was still able to do that and feel stable and secure even riding with just one hand. So I think that really says a lot about the sturdiness of the frame and just how stable the bike feels in general. Thank you. Oh, you got an e-bike too. Check it out. We got all the electric vehicles going through here. Got to got to capture this part right here. This is a Why important you... part of the gazelle tradition is lugging your own bike up and down the stairs. A little bit of extra exercise. Why would you uh, use the elevator, right? Exactly. This is why they're in better shape than all the competitors out there. And see, check this out. After you get it up the stairs, you can just ride around in the office. <laughs> Not the best spot for turbo mode. Got Ducatis all over the place. Yeah, this is definitely a perk. It is getting a cruise. Look at this, huge hallways. This used to be a Wrigley gum factory. And now they got all kinds of different bike groups and various other companies sharing the space. All right, guys, so that does it for this bike. Again, this was the Gazelle Ultimate T10 HMB. We've got the full written review, write-up, specs, measurements, everything you could want back at electricbikereview.com. We've also got the forum there. We've got a sub-forum for Gazelle where you can connect with other owners and talk about your experience and maybe modifications, that kind of fun stuff. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. And as always, ride safe, and we'll see you out there next time.